fellas. Do you ever think about video games? I do quite a lot. Pretty much all day it's going through my head. Old games, Silent Hill 2, Silent Hill 3, or new games like Bug Snacks, which comes out tomorrow. Everybody's talking about Bug Snacks. You'll be able to watch this on YouTube and on Twitch. We're gonna put we're going Bug Snacks crazy on the channel. It's gonna be amazing. But I have difficulty sometimes thinking of what how reconciling my feelings you know sometimes i think about games and i'm like okay but is it just my feeling is this just how i feel about a game is mega man x really the worst incarnation of the mega man series and overrated for years and years is donkey kong country 2 really the worst in the trilogy that's content but we will kind of get into that tonight but I would love it if somebody was very helpful and they could take me by the hand and say, no, that's not true. That's just your opinion. Or they could say, no, Coney, what you said there was true. It's a fact. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to take in some opinions, hot takes, whatever the hell you want to call them from around the internet, and discern, is this a fact or is it an opinion? So let's take a look. First up is our good friend, Token. Token says, Microsoft is going to catch up with PlayStation very quickly. They have bought dozens of studios, including Bethesda. Their first party titles are incredibly popular because they aren't exclusives, like Minecraft, Cuphead, and Ori, you know? PS PlayStation is now putting their games on a Microsoft platform. Now, you guys know what to do. Is this a fact, or is this an opinion? Do you think Microsoft is really gonna catch up with Sony? Okay, most people saying opinion. I feel that, I dig that, I dig that. And uh, you know what? It's uh, You did pretty good tonight, because it's true. I forgot I had to do the sound first. I didn't time it. That It's been a while since I've done this. Yeah, that's an opinion. Yeah, Microsoft, there's no reason to buy an Xbox. There's, why, why would you do that? There are zero exclusive on, on Xbox at all and all the cool stuff is stuff that you can get on anything else he didn't say xbox he said microsoft how do you catch up with playstation i don't get what you're saying microsoft is going to catch up with playstation if we're talking microsoft and not xbox they're ahead of playstation stupid microsoft is like a billion dollar company zetterar 90 percent of the nes library is trash and only eight percent of it is so much as bearable today with the remaining 2% being the only actual good games. Is this true or not? NES games. Based or cringe? Damn. Uh, okay, hold on. I, okay, alright, alright, okay. That's, you know what? I, I'm, I'm... Guys, I... I have some bad news. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a little bit older. I grew up on the NES. Alright? I'm 32 years old. I grew up on the NES. I played a lot of the NES games. And I, I'm, I, I have to tell you guys, uh, this is correct. It's absolutely correct. Those games suck. Those games are so shitty now. They're so bad. No, they're, they're very bad. No. There, 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 there are a couple good ones. There are a couple good ones. But no, they're, they're very bad. Oh, I like this one. Ooh, this one is fun. This one's a good time. Thank you, Zero Striker. All right. Copel says, Five Nights at Freddy's saved the horror genre, and the genre will be nowhere near as popular today if that never blew up. What do you think? Would the horror genre be dead without Freddy Fazbear? Ooh, this one. Ooh, I like this. You see this? You see this? This is what I like to see. Freddy Fazbear, save horror games. He did. He actually did, it's a fact. No, no, it's absolutely true. No, he did, he did, he did. You wanna know why? So let me, let me take you guys back to a year known as 2010. A lot of you weren't born yet. Cast your minds back to 2010, a decade ago. Okay? In 2010, a game came out, a horror video game, one that would change the landscape of gaming forever. That game was called Amnesia, The Dark Descent. Okay? 
Amnesia The Dark Descent did something that a lot of horror games at the time didn't do. It was actually scary. Okay? It was scary because it limited your control. You couldn't fight the monsters, they just walked around, you had to avoid them, whatever, and, and, and not stay in the dark. It's a good game. It's an amazing game, right? But then... Uh... Amnesia continued to not do anything different. This new Amnesia game just came out. It's the same goddamn thing. Slender did it well. Stop it. Child detected. Get him out of here. I don't think you're old enough to be watching Twitch. You're a Slender fan? Come on. Then, all these games are coming out. Then in 2014, a little game comes out called Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay? And Five Nights at Freddy's changed the world. You want to know why? Because it took the games back to, like, very base elements. It's just anxiety. That's that's all it is. It's an anxiety sim. And it was so good because your brain is constantly racked. So rather than amnesia, which is like, okay, you can't see anything, just hide in this dark spot for 15 minutes and hope something goes away, where you're just sitting there not doing anything except one thing, Five Nights was like, okay, fuck it. You got to do 50 things at once. And if you don't, a big scary bear is going to pop out and eat you. Five Nights is excellent. And the second game was hilarious, because I don't know if you guys remember the second game, but it was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta check the hallways, I gotta turn on the lights, I gotta mash this jukebox. Like, it was so funny. That game was just, there's 50 things you gotta do at all times. This is like saying Saw saved horror movies. It literally did! What are you talking about? Saw brought horror back to mainstream? Dude, are you kidding me? That's literally, you are literally wrong there. That is actually an opinion. Saw saved horror films. It really did. Our good friend Matt Harmon says, Most people who identify as gamers are boring people because gamers aren't an identity or ideology. You don't see other hobbies like golfers identify themselves like that because they have beliefs outside of their hobbies. Gamer is a placeholder identity. Wowee. Could it be true that... Labeling yourself as a gamer means you have nothing more interesting to say? Well... I have something to tell you guys. It's an opinion. Game is life. I'm a proud gamer and I've been a gamer all my life and I'm not about to have some dude in a button-up shirt tell me that I'm boring for playing games, okay? I'm a gamer till I die. Game is life. Stop the cat. <laughs> we'll end it here. You guys get it, right? You get it. Yeah. All right. Cringe. I agree. Yeah. Okay. No, this is true. Yeah. I, I think this is young people. So it's important to not let the stuff that you consume become your entire life. You feel me? You can like things without it becoming your entire uh, identity. Okay? That's all. Lucky Charms suck. No one is trying to eat shitty Cheerios with stale marshmallows that make the milk way too sweet by simply existing. Not to mention the mascot is a huge dick. <laughs> well, we gotta bring Lucky into this. What the heck? So is this true or not? Do Lucky Charms suck? Nope, that's just your opinion. They are magically delicious. Lucky Charms are great. No one is trying to eat shitty Cheerios with stale marshmallows that make the milk way too sweet. I am trying to eat shitty Cheerios with marshmallows. My inner child is thriving. They're delicious. Who hurt you? What happened to you? The mascot is a dick. He's a leprechaun. Like, the, the leprechaun never, like, kills the children. It's not, he's, he's not, like, he's not hurting people. He's just getting away from kids who won't leave him alone. I do that at every tournament I go to. Am I a dick? <laughs> well, you know? Serial tier list? Uh, I don't know. It feels hacky. I feel like serial tier list is the content creator... Uh, equivalent of like, so what about this airline food? If you ever see me do a serial tier list, it's a cry for help. But if you did see the serial tier list, you would catch it on my YouTube. Guys, we only need about 800 more subs to hit 25k. We started taking YouTube seriously a couple months ago. It's been doing pretty well. If you are in the future and you're watching this on YouTube, you better sub. You have no excuse. These people are on a wholly different website. I need you to sub, I need you to like, and I need you to comment. I don't care about what. I don't care. I just want the algorithm to like me. I don't care what you say. But I will read it. Because I'm not big enough to ignore it yet. But I will be soon, with your help. Here we go.
Kimmick, if game developers were somehow able to, they should ban people from sharing any information from any games with strategy. Otherwise, strategy creation is instantly killed. There's no reason to explore all the buffs in Cuphead if you know that the Invincible Dash is broken. Now, is this a fact or is this an opinion? Should we... <laughs> should... <laughs> all right, all right, I'm cutting it. I'm cutting it. I'm cutting it. I'm cutting it. That was that one. That one was for fun. That one was for fun. That was a fun one. That's literally censorship. What dev would do that? What what developer would be like no talking about my game? <laughs> what the hell is that? The brain guy. <laughs> That's true. Jonathan Blow would do that. That's true. Mugman, good friend of the channel. Good friend of the channel. 3D Mario games after Odyssey will never reach the same heights that game did unless they just bring back Cappy every time. The movement, Cappy, Odyssey in general brings 3D Mario makes it in a league of its own and nothing will ever stand up to it unless they just... I can't tell what that... Hold on. Copy it. Copy it. Copy it. Copy it. Is Mario Odyssey the peak of Super Mario? Forever and ever. What do you think? All right. No, I'm, 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 I'm stopping the count. This is fake. This is fake. And you, I think you know it's fake, Mugman, right? This is bait. It's not bait. It's, Mugman, I know you're baiting. You're, she's baiting. I thought you'd have my side. You thought absolutely wrong. Why would I think that? Why would anyone think that? Why did you think that? You're, you, Mugman, you are the serial guy, right? And Mario 64 comes out, and you're like, Nintendo will never top this. And then they gave him a jetpack, and you're like, Pfft. And then you said, okay, Nintendo will never top this. And then they put him in space, and you went, Pfft. And then you said, Nintendo will never top this. And then they gave you Odyssey. You are continually being wrong, over and over. Nintendo is magic. Casualty says, you can... Judge a game's quality, objectively, using different aspects critics use. Like control, story, gameplay, com or character complexity, acting. I've heard many people say you can't objectively judge how good a game is. No, the game's quality is all down to personal preference. What do you think? Uh, can you objectively judge a game's quality? Oh my god, look at that split. Look at that split. Alright, uh, there we go. Okay, okay. So, it looks like most people are saying this is fact. Um... But, it's not. No, no, you can't. You, you can't objectively judge a game's quality. Because it all comes down to the person writing the review. All judgments are subjective. So, in this tweet specifically, you will see... Hold on, I wish I had like a... I wish I had like a pointer. What do I have? I, I'll... Fuck it. All right, you can see in this... Thank God for the HyperX wireless headset, by the way. You can see in this tweet specifically. You can judge... You can... You can judge a game's quality using different aspects critics use, such as controls. Yes. Right? Story. Kind of? Maybe? Character complexity. Wrong. Wrong. I don't give a shit what a near automata fan wants to tell me about a game's character complexity. It's boring. Shut the hell up. I don't care what this person is saying. I don't care if Danganronpa's story is cool when every time somebody dies. Oh no, he's dead. Uh, that's my best friend. He was such a nice guy. He gets run over by a fucking steamroller. He's like flattened out like Roger Rabbit. This is so sad. Oh, this one's from my boss, so I had to put it up. It's contractual obligation. You guys understand. Chicken Parmesan is the worst form of chicken. Why would you make a chicken fried and crunchy, then smother it in sauce that makes it soggy unless you eat it frame one? Terrible. Now, uh, Alan's distaste for chicken parmesan is legendary. He hates it. He's hated it for a long time. It's sort of become a meme. And it looks like he does not... 
share that sentiment with many of you. You guys are right. Chicken parm is delicious. Uh, it's good. I, Alan, I don't. I have to stay true to myself. I have to be real with myself. Chicken parm is tasty. If it's soggy, it's because you're taking it out. It's because you're ordering takeout. Just eat it there. See my response in your paycheck this month. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Alan, for this opinion. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. The Switch is one of the worst consoles ever made in comparison to other consoles in their own generation. It is only relevant because of Nintendo exclusives. I'm not putting up the poll on this one. This is... You're silly. You're you're a silly goose. You, you are a silly goose. You just wanted to be on the show. Didn't you? Toon Siano. Internet culture has ruined lots of media. Games, movies, and shows are less fun to experience because people are always trying to find out if it is objectively good. What do you think? Did the internet ruin media? This is an opinion, you say. Did the internet really ruin media? Well, I have some news for you. It's both? Because... The internet is so obsessed over whether something is good or not, and they go to the internet to sort of confirm their bias or, or to figure it out before they get into it, that more and more people consume whatever it is. Uh, whether it's Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones or whatever, everybody's like, is this actually good? And everybody says, yes, it's actually good, and they figure it out, and then everybody goes to watch that. Meanwhile, stuff that is pretty good, you know, that might be okay, um, in the right sort of context, People just dump on it for no reason. I think you see this a lot in the way that people reflect on and think about games like The Last of Us 2. Have you ever been talking with somebody or reading something online and it's very clear that people are parroting things that they've seen YouTubers say? It's really weird. Um, whenever I dump on Sonic Adventure 2, there's always a few people that will, like, link me videos about why it's so good. And, like, they'll say the same shit. Like, they immediately go into defense mode where they're like, Oh, you're making fun of it because it didn't transition well into 3D. And I'm like, okay, you read a vi you watched a video that said why Sonic didn't translate well into 3D. And you think that's what this is all about. I think people get their opinions from screen men and women so much that they can't come up with stuff on their own. But that's why we have shows like this, so I can tell you what to think, whether something is a fact or an opinion. Anyway, go make your own opinions. It's important to have your own opinions, except the ones that I have, which I'm telling you right now. It's important. Okay. Anyway, influencers are to blame, as with most things. A fish says, Not every fighter in Smash may be fun, but they are someone's favorite fighter, which makes their inclusion valid. Let's extend this to all fighting games. Let's extend this to all fighting games. Not every character in a fighting game may be fun, but somebody loves them, which makes their inclusion okay. Every single fighter can be someone's favorite fighter, which makes their inclusion valid. Is that true or not? Nope! That's an opinion. Bullshit! Bullshit! You could not tell me somebody would be sad if Duck Hunt wasn't in the game. You can't tell me that. They wouldn't care. And they would have fun playing something else. And if they didn't, maybe they just don't like the game. You could just get rid of Robin. Who cares? Pick another projectile wielder. It's basically kind of Samus, you know? Play Samus. You're fine. I don't care if you want more characters. Then you get to be like League of Legends with 200 characters and there are six versions of the same thing. I said I wouldn't talk about League. God damn it, you pulled me back in. I don't need Lux, Velkaz, Ziggs, Zareth. I don't need all four of those. They all do the same thing. Do you need Duck Hunt, Villager, Pac-Man, Mega Man? They're... B Come on, dude. Dark Samus, Samus, Pit, Dark Pit. Jesus, fuck. Is Dark Pit anybody's favorite character? Seriously. Would you be sad if Dark Pit wasn't in the game? No, you wouldn't. And if you agree with me, you'll shake. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You agree with me. Good. I'm glad we could come to this understanding. That's a fucking opinion and you know it.
That's an opinion. Get the fuck out of my face. Griffler says Marvel vs. Capcom should ditch the Marvel part eventually and just become a Capcom All-Stars fighter. That's stupid. That's so dumb. No. Absolutely not. Why would you do that? Marvel is bigger than it's ever been. Capcom has doesn't have enough characters to fill that out. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard on this channel. Yes, they do. No, they don't. How many fight? Okay, are you gonna add Tron Bone? You gonna add Roll? They have eight fighting game characters. Oh wait, Capcom All Stars fight. Okay, never mind. This is fact. This is fact. No, hold on. Wait, this is. I didn't think of that. Wait, are we talking about like Dark Stalkers versus Street Fighter versus? Okay, that's fact. You're right. No, this is true. However, uh, they should also have Marvel vs. Capcom at the same time. So it's also an opinion. It's both. It's both. Base Frost. Sonic fans today should no longer be part of bad fan bases. With the amount of talent that goes into creating fantastic animations, good fan games, and even the power to change the Sonic movies designed for the better, they've gotten better themselves over the years. Fact or opinion? A lot of people are saying that's an opinion. And, uh, yeah, I agree. You guys are still weird. You guys are still weird. Sonic fan base is weird. Is weird. Now, there are a lot of talented weirdos. There are a lot of very talented people in the fan base. Don't get me wrong. They make great stuff and, and they're very talented. They're good at what they do. Uh, however, um, Sonic fans, if you identify as a Sonic fan, like a big part of the fandom, you know what I mean? You're probably in my mentions arguing about a game from 30 years ago. You say this as a member of the Smash community. Uh, uh, uh. I'm a member of the Smash competitive community. There's a very big difference. It might be worse. But I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't think that's worse. You think that's worse? I'm not talking about the... Whatever. You... I think... I think the competitive community is better than people who are still really into Smash casually right now. Those people who, like, really care about who is or isn't in the game and getting fights over it, the people who are campaigning for Bandana D in 2020, that's not weird to you? You don't think so? You don't think that's weird? People who are in taunt lobbies and go make lobbies on Smash Online to not fight, just to taunt, you think that's weirder than the competitive community? Shut the fuck up. Shake my hand. Thank you very much. Here's a little bit of comic relief. All right, here's a little bit of fun. The live-action Super Mario Bros. movie with Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo is extremely enjoyable to watch for all the weird creative shit it pulls off, and I'd rather watch that than whatever CGI-infested corporate mush the new Sonic movie was. Super Mario Bros. better than Sonic the Hedgehog? Also, it's true. This is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's right. He's right about this. Um, I think Super Ma the Super Mario movie... The problem is that it came out at a time where a lot of people really wanted the realism of the games. Now, I think there have been enough video games that have tried to do right by the game that it's gotten really... Uh, I, 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 I would rather have the opposite. I would rather have something take a world of a game and just fuck it up. Take creative liberties with it and find interesting ways to tell stories. Either way, I'm not looking forward to the Mario movie made by the Minion people, because that's about to happen. And when that happens, we'll revisit this, and I think you guys are going to change your tune. Donkey Kong Country 2 is better than 1. This is fake. I'm so glad I don't have to spend time on this. No, 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 no. A lot of people... A lot of people parrot this. A lot of people parrot this. No, no, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. A lot of people say that Donkey Kong 2 is better than Donkey Kong 1. Listen, the gameplay, slightly better. But it's it, there's, there's nothing in terms of atmosphere. I've talked about this on the channel before. I'm not going to waste your time. Donkey Kong Country has amazing atmosphere. It's a very confined experience. It's very central to its location. The jungle. You have the jungle. You have mine carts. You have these, these, these very lush landscapes. The forest, right? You said earlier the gameplay over atmosphere. It depends on the game. It depends on the game. Because our Donkey Kong Country's atmosphere is so masterfully crafted that the slight change in gameplay, the elevation in gameplay from Donkey Kong Country 2 from 1, doesn't... What? The fucking Webby the spider? You think that's worth sacrificing? The feeling that you get when you hear life in the mines? It's not. 
Also, I'm gonna say it again, Sticker Bush Symphony, that level sucks. The one where you're constantly hitting the barrels and you got- I hate that level. I don't like that level. Half of the time, you spend all of your time sitting in a barrel like, Oh god, I gotta wait for it to cycle again. Good song though? No. Okay, there, I, I, I sip the content juice a little hard on that one. I'm being a contrarian. It's a good song, it's not as good as you guys are saying though. There are better songs on the soundtrack. The Forest Bop? Excellent. Hothead Bop? Perfect. Okay, I have to- I- I'll admit when I'm wrong, okay? But Donkey Kong Country 1 is better than 2. Donkey Kong Country 3 is pretty good, but mostly unmemorable. I don't know why the theme is Canada. That's a little weird. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of video game facts or opinions. Were you right? Were you wrong? You were probably mostly wrong, right? It's okay. It's all right. We're learning, right? It's all about learning. And one thing that you should learn is how important it is for you to subscribe. Right, chat? Can I get some nodders? Some nods? Some nodding Twitch chat? No, don't shake your head. Subscribing is free and it helps the channel a lot. Please subscribe, drop a like, leave a comment, do all that stuff that a million other people have told you to do. I'll see you next time.